The M1 Garand, or M1 rifle, is quite possibly one of the most instantly recognized firearms of the Second World War and is seen in multiple films and video games set in that period. Adopted in 1936 by the US Army during World War II and the Korean War, it was the first standard issue auto-loading rifle for the United States. The M1 Garand is without a doubt one of the best rifles of World War II and is widely regarded by military historians and firearms enthusiasts as the greatest, most respected American service rifle of all time. My name is Liam Smith, and in today's World War II video, I'll briefly discuss this revolutionary weapon that General George S. Patton called the greatest battle implement ever devised. After the conclusion of the First World War, the United States began looking into the creation of a self-loading semi-automatic rifle to substitute the M1903 Springfield Bolt Action Rifle, which was the standard US service rifle at the time. The new rifle was also designed to outperform existing bolt action rifles of other nations, such as the British Lee-Enfield, German Mauser, and Japanese Arisaka. French-Canadian firearms engineer John Candier's Garand was given the task to design this new game-changing firearm. Garand originally designed the rifle to accommodate 276 Penderson ammunition, but the US Army issued a new set of specifications for the rifle to accommodate the 30-06 Springfield ammunition used in the Springfield bolt action rifle. The official designation of this firearm was US Rifle Calibre 30 M1 and was often called the M1 by US soldiers. In fact, the name Garand, or Garand, was a title more popular with civilians during and after the conclusion of the Second World War. Although the M19 rifle continued to see service throughout the conflict, the weapon was eventually phased out in favor of the M1. During the war, the United States was the only country to be equipped with a semi-automatic rifle as a standard infantry weapon which was a significant advantage over enemy forces who utilized bolt-action rifles. The rate of fire for the M1 was very effective against the Japanese, German, and Italian armies, as it provided squads with high levels of concentrated firepower. The firearm was cost-effective, reliable, and highly accurate. It held an 830-06 round M-block clip, which was a solid piece of metal that held the rounds to be inserted as a unit into the fixed magazine of the weapon. It had a rate of fire between 40 and 50 rounds a minute, and the maximum range was 500 yards. What was very unique about this firearm was that it was gas-operated, and when a round was fired, the gas expelled and moved the bolt back, thereby ejecting the spent casing. A spring-loaded mechanism would then drive the bolt back into its original position, thus replacing the spent casing with a new chambered round from the internal magazine system. When the last round was fired, the clip would eject, thus locking the bolt open and allowing a new clip to be inserted. A spent M-block clip could be reloaded after the rounds were spent when time permitted. When this spent clip was ejected from the rifle, it produced a distinctive ping sound. This iconic noise has become synonymous with the M1, particularly in films and video games set during the Second World War. What we can do here is die! Covering fire! Go! Go! Go!
there is a misconception that an enemy soldier would wait to hear the distinct ping sound of the M1 that gave the telltale sign a soldier was reloading. But during combat situations, the intense noise of gunfire and artillery drowned out the noise. A disadvantage of the M1 was if a user was not careful loading a clip whilst reloading, the bolt could accidentally slam forward onto a user's thumb. This was commonly referred to as Gerund thumb. What I found most interesting was that there were even sniper versions of the M1 that were essentially modified to accept scope mounts. These were two versions, the M1C and M1D. They were produced as a substitute to the M1903 bolt action rifle, but only in limited quantity. Many M1s were also fitted with bayonets and the M7 grenade launcher, which was adopted by the US military in 1943. Over 5.4 million M1s were produced during the Second World War, and it continued to see service with the United States until 1957, when it was eventually replaced with the more improved M14. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching. I really enjoy making these history videos. And don't forget to give us a like and to subscribe for more content. Finally, a shout out to my amazing subscribers for your ongoing support of the channel. Liam Smith with Agent Smith Voice Productions. Until then, stay tuned. I'll see you next time.